Hello viewers, and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. Last time we took down the second boss in the wield. And today, I have no idea what we're doing. Let's go, let's go find out. Very little uh, needs doing in town right now, I suppose, actually. Let's, uh, let's double check people's stress levels. What are you at? <clears throat> 44. Honestly, I'm content to let him sit at 44, but Hughes, Hughes is going to need to uh, take a load off. Oh, even more stress Little recovery. Hope, however desperate, is never without worth. Alright, so, as you can see, after that, we're short on pretty much everything. Honestly, we're still pretty deed-starved, because I really want to get my armor smith leveled up. Unfortunately, the way we get deeds reliably is by going to the wield, and probably you guys are just playing sick of seeing that by now. This has basically just been... almost this entire Let's Play has been spent in the wield. This isn't a bad trinket, and we are down to actually zero busts now. This might not be a bad idea. That's fine. That actually is pretty good. Uh, are we doing yet another episode in the wield? We're going to go to the ruins just for a change of pace. I think that that's going to happen. This is just rabies, right? Yeah, just rabies. No big deal. That guy just has rabies. Uh, let's... Let's see here. Who needs a little love? What's represented in our, our high levels here? We have a heli and a grave robber. Um... I do want to leave Trelly in town for a week or two, probably. And just let him avail himself of a little bit of free stress healing. Reynold? Reynold hasn't been out in a while. Uh, let's bring the Plague Doctor. That sounds good. And I guess it's time for a couple of the new guys. We do need to actually get uh, a leper up. So a Blutomania, Clumsy, Deadly. That's not too bad. This guy misses the spot and has a completely meaningless... Okay, it's the other one. Moyo. Congratulations, welcome to the team. He's got Chop and Hue, that's basically uh, basically what I require of a leper before he gets to, to join us in the party. And who else? We already have a bounty hunter in our high level party, so we're not in any rush to bring up fillets. Hmm. Let's bring up this Arbalest. I do really like Arbalest. I think they're, uh, ooh, she's got Manslayer. That is a handy one, especially uh, for the ruins. So neither one of these guys are any good if they get moved up to the second row. I think we'll just leave them as they are. Alright, short ruins run. Should be easy. The uh, should be easy. That's a that's a dangerous thing to say, but I do mean it. It shouldn't. This should not be too difficult. We're gonna go a little light on the supplies here. Honestly, I probably didn't need to bring a full stack of food. I probably could have just brought eight. But hopefully, we'll uh, we'll not have too hard a time here. Pace out the halls of your lineage once familiar. Now, Boren. Oof, that's an inauspicious start. We're ambushed by foul invention. These inventions are pretty foul. I wonder how long that trap has been sitting there. Alright. It is important to note that a Bone Soldier and a Bone Rabble are different units, and Bone Soldiers actually might deal meaningful damage. There, that is a real situation. Masterfully executed. Great start. That's alright. The Leper has a big boatload of HP. I'm not too worried about that. 
Okay, is this guy? Yeah, that guy's dead. We're gonna focus in on the Bone Soldier real quick. Has the, enemy the Bone Rabble is really uh, sort of a dude of last, res last resort, but Their formation is broken. honestly, I probably should have hewed there if we had a chance of uh, destroying this corpse and bringing the uh, bringing the Bone Arbalest in. Yeah, see. Now, I actually have to spend a turn doing a thing to a corpse, which is horribly inefficient. You never, ever want to be in that position. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of a single point of healing here, because I think it's extremely likely that we'll manage to get this kill with our Crusader. Unfortunately, Digby has no skills that can target the front line. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Arbalests do have a reasonable uh, frontline skill in their ability to shoot bolas, but unfortunately she didn't come with it, and I didn't feel like spending any money on unlock. Hmm, that's interesting. No, not really. I think it's still it's still right to just blight that guy in the back. An unlucky hit. We might still get him. Or what am I talking about? We have no turns left. Well, he's dead now. So these uh these low level missions are starting to get a little bit perfunctory. Which means that I don't have a tremendous amount to say about them. Uh, but also it means and I suppose I can, uh... Destroy them all. I suppose I can focus in on some overall strategy Death stuff. Uh, that's unfortunate, he got his turn. Ooh! Lepers. Just doing what lepers do, unfortunately. We're coming out okay on, uh... On crests here so far, I'm happy about that. Oh, I keep right-clicking. A, uh, a viewer helpfully pointed out in the comments of the last video, or the video before, maybe, one of the recent videos, that you can just press the T button to pop a torch. That is handy. It removes a lot of fiddliness from the interface, so thank you very much, uh, person who's sadly... person whose name I sadly do not remember. I'll uh, try to remember to put an annotation in here. Thank you properly. But with these room scouting missions, um, you know, we pretty much just walk the dungeon in the most efficient path, try not to do any backtracking unless we absolutely have to. I remember that the game rounds up on the number of rooms that you get to skip, so in a... In a, room, a dungeon that has ten or fewer rooms, you will get to skip one room. In a dungeon that has uh, between ten and twenty rooms, you'll get to skip two. And we're just doing the, the thing that we've been doing this whole time. Aggressive action. Oh man, they really want her. Alright. Uh, so he has ten health left. No, that's a shame. The slow death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Yeah, the Arbalist is, uh, is eating a lot of crap here, actually. I'm starting to get a little nervous. Alright, how about you try... Yeah, there's a reasonable chance of killing the corpse, and he already isn't going to kill this guy even with a max health swing. Or a max damage swing. So we're gonna go ahead and hew. And yep, we did get lucky and clear the corpse at the same time. So that moves this guy up into a position where he can't really, uh... uh he can't really... He can't use his best attack, I believe, from the second row. I know I know that they definitely can't from the front row. I think from the second row as well. But I suppose we'll see. Or maybe we won't. Yeah, okay. Turns out he's dead. Um... I don't know. Just continue to heal yourself. Slowly, gently, 
This is how a life is taken. Sometimes, and sometimes a life is taken with a huge buster sword to the dome. It's not just me, right? This kind of looks like the buster sword. So too will resistance. All right, we used our key already. Let's see if it's trapped. It's not. Wow, really, really doing well on crests here. Okay, we have no particular need to explore this way because we can just skip one, uh, one room. But I think it behooves us to go to any room that is not, um, in general, it behooves us to go to any room that is not blocked off with a, uh, a blocked passage. Ooh. This actually looks pretty bad. This is going to be a tough one. Right, we're going to try to get the blight rolling. As always, our goal here is to minimize the number of times the enemy gets to attack us. So that means number one, controlling their actions, and number two, Ooh. injury. That was quite a hit. Number two, being very uh, efficient with our own actions. We need to waste nothing, if that's at all possible. Hmm. Do I actually want to move her back to? That puts the Plague Doctor in a position where she can't use any of her good abilities. In fact, what does she have available? She'll still have Noxious Blast. Because uh, next time she moves, she'd be able to move back to anyway. And she can't do anything from the second slot, so she'll have to move to. Yeah, I'm only going to swap her back one, because I don't want to move the Plague Doctor. Um, ooh. If only one of them can be in a position to use uh, their best attacks, I'd rather have the Plague Doctor's attacks available than the Arbalest's. That's the decision I made there. Uh, we're going to we're gonna absorb a lot of damage and stress here. This battle has really been ugly. Ah, uh, we only got the uh, the weak hits off on this guy, and sadly the second blight didn't take on her, so she's still alive. The hue is pretty likely to get a kill here. I think we're gonna do it so that we can start getting damage on the bone defender as well. And here's hoping we don't roll minimum damage. Oh, also a miss is bad. Not not hitting you at all. That's pretty pretty crummy. Okay, so now everybody's back in position. Okay, that had to happen. It's possible that I should have healed there, but uh, I really, really prefer to be proactive. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. All right. This guy has 11 health. Is there any chance that we get him down in time? I think we have to take it. I think we have to go for it. Okay, so he effectively has seven health now. This could do it. It's unlikely, but it could. Yeah, it didn't. Okay, good, good, good. We go for the hue. Awesome, and that's both of them dead. How? You have one more damage left on you? Alright, you're just gonna use this skill because he gives plus six torch. That is a minor positive. Wow. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. At least the payout from that was nice. So, let's uh, think about how much food we have to eat here. I think it's quite a bit. We really have to return at least our frontliners to health. So here's hoping we don't get two hunger events. I'm not going to... Um, you may have noticed I left... I left myself one and a half meal portions. I'm not going to eat the last two food because I don't think we really need to. Not as badly as we needed to heal the frontliners. Um, and I want to save the two extra food in case we get another uh, small amount Even of food. The cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Alright, it's possible that we could get another small amount of food from loot somewhere and make up another meal portion with it. Man, that uh, torch hotkey is really nice. I wish I'd known about that sooner.
I don't usually check bookcases or stacks of books late in the adventure. My experience with them is that they are negative more often than they are positive. And when you're early in the adventure, uh, you can find maps and stuff. You can, you know, you can find things that make the risk worthwhile. Late in the adventure, though, I don't think that's as true. Oh, what an unfortunate miss. Okay. His hue is pretty unlikely to get a kill. So we'll use the other strike. I want to try to get as many of these dudes down quickly as I can. Alright, well that guy's dead, but he gets to knock her to death's door first. Oh no, he only took her to one, actually. Alright, so... Probably this Bone Rabble gets one shot by one of the frontliners, and honestly, even if he doesn't, he's not really that dangerous. So we're going to take this opportunity to give her a little bit more health. Alright. Impressive. Wow. Well, no kill like overkill. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. And the difficult part of the dungeon is now over. I don't have the right thing for this. I don't remember what you want. I'm pretty sure it's not holy water. Here, just touch it. You've been blighted. Oh no. It's okay, the hard part of the dungeon's over already. Let's continue adventuring. No, no. Okay. When the game stopped me right in front of the Iron Maiden and popped up a text box, before the text even filled in, I was terrified that somebody was going to touch the Iron Maiden without, uh, without me asking them to. So I'm a little disappointed that that's not treasure. Do we have anyone in our party who's good at disarming traps? The Plague Doctor is reasonably good at disarming traps and would really benefit from the stress heal, so we're going to give it a shot. Nope. And now, instead of benefiting from the stress heal, our plague doctor has uh, our plague doctor has made it necessary for us to stress heal her in town. The shifted corridors and sloped walls of our ancestry are beginning to feel familiar. That went down pretty quickly. We did make it out with a pretty reasonable uh, amount of gold, and this trinket is nice. And it's hard to be mad about 24 crests. I still need about 100 billion crests to finish upgrading the town, so... Alright, positive. The yips, that's gonna have to go. Off guard, that's annoying, but it's not any worse than annoying. And ruins phobe. Well, I don't care for that much either. In truth, I cannot tell how much time has passed since I sent that letter. Well. On the whole, that didn't go perfectly, but it went pretty well. Ah, oh, the caretaker, what a jerk. I don't want to have to use a different, slightly more expensive de-stressor. How's Digby? 44... Uh, we'll let 44 sit. Alright. That was a pretty short run, so I think we're going to get right back out there. Unfortunately, with 8 busts and 29 crests, I don't know. I don't think we have anything extra to... Ooh, another boss has become available. The Necromancer Apprentice. So, plus 33% heal, minus 15% damage, minus 25% debuff skill chance. This really specializes your Vestal into just healing, and I actually think that that is the worst thing you could do to a Vestal. You need to maintain that uh, offensive capability. So, every time you get back from a mission, the game regenerates all the, mission, all the, all the uh, missions fresh. Which means that we will get a different Necromancer Apprentice mission when we come back. And it'll have different rewards, and so we're gonna uh, we're gonna do something else basically to make the game re-roll this reward and offer us something that's a little bit more palatable. So we could go get another one of those. That's a pretty longevity eye patch. What a strange name for an item, but that's pretty good. 
Uh, in the cove, we could get a worry stone. Uh, virtue chance is the chance that when your hero hits 100%, they will gain a positive effect instead of a negative effect. We are not too concerned with virtue chance because, you know, our whole thing is not getting to 100 stress in the first place. Another opportunity to get a worry stone. Hmm. Huh. That's actually pretty cool. Our highwaymen are both pretty ranged focused. I think we'll do this. This will be our, our uh, conclusion to the episode. It's important to build up a base of solid trinkets. You really, um, when you get to the higher level dungeons, and when I say higher level, I mean the uh, yellow and red dungeons, the non-green dungeons, you, you need to have good equipment. Uh, so, who wants to come with us on this short scout of the Warrens? It's full of pigmen. So, Blight is not tremendously effective. Or we're already sort of by level, aren't we? Indeed. Well, Reynold can just get right back in there. He's in great shape. Uh, we'll bring Trelly in the second slot. I don't really care for Bello, and Defender is extremely situational. We have a little bit of money. I think I am going to fix his skills up. Rampart is just a its just a really great skill. There's no two ways about that. Uh, Command and Bolster are both buffs, I believe, for the entire team. Bolster is definitely for the entire team. Command might be for the entire team as well, which would make it pretty great. Um... Yeah, let's go ahead and unlock that. We're not going to bother upgrading these right now, but we are going to... Alright, I think that's much more reasonable. So, Reynold, Trelly... Do we have a high-level Vestal? We do. But do I want to bring up another one? Uh, sadly, this Vestal has pretty weird skills. Eh, we'll bring her anyway. I don't want to pay to change her skills, but I'm sure she'll be useful. Sadly, we can't bring the Plague Doctor. I really do want to get a Plague Doctor up to high level as quickly as possible. Well, let's take Hughes with us, I guess. An Arbalest is another thing that I really need up at a decent level. We're going to go ahead and bring 12 food. We turned out to need it last time. Uh, I think we'll go this way. There are lots of items in the Warrens that you can use medicinal herbs on to gain a great deal of food. I'm pretty sure there are locked items in all of the dungeons. And holy water, you know, holy water can be good. The things that Holy Water is good for, it's very good for. It turns some mediocre and bad outcomes into really great outcomes. I would say that it's better at uh, magnitude of changes in outcome than the other things are. We must first scout their squalid homes. Indeed, let us, squ let us scout their squalid homes. I almost couldn't even say that. Wow, a thousand gold right off the bat for just walking in. Watch your step. That feels familiar. Oh, everything runs red. You have a little cut. Yeah, I think it's Wayne. He gets them all riled up with his grim pronouncements. And then everybody's super dramatic about everything. Okay. I don't remember what this one does, but I know this is a thing for holy water. Okay, it just allows better searches. I'm always happy to have more heirlooms. That's just going to continue to be true until we uh, reach the point in the game where all of our buildings are completely upgraded. A single portrait. Baller. I don't know who is the best disarmer in this party. Turns out everybody's pretty bad at it. 
you, you have somewhat high stress. Well, that's the gamble. Spring to life with a singular purpose. Dungeon's not going super great so far. Oh, that's right, her stun can't hit the back row. Illuminate can. He doesn't have any dodge, so the dodge removal doesn't really mean anything, but it is damage. It's possible that I would have been better off just going for a stun on one of the worms, especially given that we have observed them to have a very high crit rate. As always, I prefer to kill enemies to generate a lot of stress, but uh, I might be overdoing it there. I might be tunnel visioning on that concern a little too hard. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Fortunately, we do have guys who can just uh, burn through these worms pretty quickly. Hmm, he's not as likely. We're gonna take a stun from him then. He was not very likely to get a kill on a worm with his uh with his normal attack. Okay, well drums of debilitation at least uh do not inflict tons of extra stress damage. So that's good. We're going to try to let the uh let the arbalest finish off the pig. Oh, an unfortunate miss. I think we should be able to get... Yeah, we're guaranteed to kill this guy as long as we hit. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Okay, there we go. We did, uh... We did take a little bit of damage. Hmm. Do I even want to bother healing it? I'm concerned about this guy getting a turn, basically. I'm going to take the gamble that one of our heroes is going to go before he is. Okay. The fiend falls. Heavily rewarded for my gamble. Blossoms. I feel pretty good about that. And again, big payout. I said the dungeon wasn't going that well. What I meant was trap-wise, loot-wise, we're doing fantastically. Considering how long we've been in here. Also, more anti-venom. The game, the game maybe knows something I don't. trying to warn us. Alright, a great dodge from Reynold. He's really really earning his canned food. That looks like cat food right there. Okay, this time we're going to do the smart thing and stun one of these monsters first. Oh, no, never mind. We attempted to do the smart thing. That's definitely worth points. Wow, our party was uh, really slow off the blocks this time. Alright, a good strike for half of his life. We'll attack the uh, one of the uninjured ones with Reynold since he's so likely to get a one-shot. Uh, so that we can save this guy for the man-at-arms, but... I think what I'm going to do instead is stun, actually. A stun guarantees that we remove an action from next turn, whereas that uh, attack would only have been a chance to do so. And of course, the attack would have uh, also had a chance to remove an attack from every subsequent turn, but... In this case, I didn't think the gamble was worthwhile. It was too unlikely. I'm trying desperately to land some stuns here. These guys only have 50% stun resist, I'm really... Surprised that they're resisting as much as they are. Obviously, a kill is better than a stun if the kill is uh, pretty well guaranteed. All right, we're finally hitting them. That's excellent. Sadly, nobody else wants to gain uh, any stress relief. Wow, eight on a normal. What? That's crazy. Alright, this is another situation where I think this thing is uh, dead before the end of the turn, so we can afford to throw a heal out. Oh, 
seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Right. He has 11 health and he had 6 points of blight on him. I think that's definitely worth using an anti-venom on. This guy only has 1 point of blight left on him with 18 health, so that's definitely not worthwhile. Alright, well this should be a relatively easy encounter. And thank God for that. Eh, you're fine. As always, hammer the enemy that uh, produces all the stress. Our man-at-arms should be able to finish this. Nope, he got dodged. So it doesn't matter what uh, attack we had chosen. In a way, that's kind of liberating. But in another, much more important way, it's incredibly frustrating. Wow, they really hate him. I don't know what he did. Alright, let's get some kills. Reynald, do it! Oh, so close. If only she had her Bola skill. It hits both the guys in the front for, uh... Greatly reduced damage, but it would almost certainly kill them both in this situation. This is what I get for not upgrading people's skills. We must have a very low speed party. Because we are, like, never getting to go first. 1, 4, 0, 1. Yep. We do, in fact, have a very low speed party. I'm usually pretty dismissive of speed. Um... Partially, that's because it's available in such small amounts, usually. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Uh-oh. Ah. Uh, why did infected have to mean a, a disease there? Sometimes infected just means a blight. The game's very loose on its terminology. Alright. Two more rooms. We're definitely getting there. Another trap! Man, this guy has taken so much stress damage. Uh-oh. Okay, well that one's positive. He is robust. He looks pretty robust to me. So when you get that text, a text like that says, the scrawling's forever changing hero, if it's in yellow, like the color of the the names here that shade of yellow then it's a positive trait and if the text is in red then it's a negative trait okay hmm let's let's try to minimize our stress gain between the wretch and the drummer we could totally see our man at arms get pushed over if we're not careful. Pushed over 100 stress. And I think that would be a real bummer, man. So. I'm not going to use the stun. We're just going to lay into this guy. I want him dead. The wretch also has to die, obviously, but, uh. Get him. Ah, oh, minimum damage. Always with the minimum damage. All right, well, if we get a lucky crit on this carry eater, it'll carry him forward. Actually, you know what? Him being forward doesn't matter for anyone except the Crusader. Everybody else can hit the third row. All right, this seems like a, uh, a fine time to do this skill that will probably kill him. The enemies have been, uh, really focusing their fire well. <sighs> also, really resisting our stuns well. Alright, at 73 he should be safe, even if the pig critically vomits on him. Because that's a thing that can happen in Darkest Dungeon. Sometimes you're just hanging out and then your guys get critically vomited on. It's impossible to see something like that coming. The light, the promise of safety, 
Alright, so accuracy buff for the Arbalest. She has a 90% chance to hit. Okay. Foolish horrors. Brought low and driven into the mud. Honestly, plus 5% crit is really insignificant. Four dodge, minus one speed. I'll put one of those on him. We had to do that in order to make room. Uh, Alright. I believe... Oh no, I don't even have holy water anymore. I don't know what I was thinking. I was going to say I believe that using holy water on one of these removes a negative trait. Or a negative quirk. I don't know, man. You have the highest trust in the party. Just touch it. The altar's purpose is purely decorative, it says, but when he touched it, it started bleeding profusely. I don't know, maybe the game has a different definition of uh, decorative than I do. Alright. Put medicine into the brew, gain 30% damage. That's pretty reliable, and you find a lot of those barrels here in the Warrens. Oh, and we got the scout off. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna go into this hallway, check the curio, back up into the room. Nice. Back up into the room. It turns out we didn't use any of our food. That's pretty unusual. And then we're gonna go this way as far as the curio and then leave the dungeon. No sense leaving loot on the floor, right? The swine folk's labyrinth may yet prove to be navigable. I think that it has, in fact, already proven to be navigable. I think that that's what, that's what just happened, man. Okay, so this was a pretty uneventful episode. Um, I decided when I started the file up that I was going to record every run and post every run, not just the interesting ones, because I wanted there to be context for the decisions that I make in the interesting ones. But unfortunately that means that sometimes we're just going to have kind of uninteresting episodes like this. Ah, uh, the yips is a... You know, the yips is a real bummer and we totally didn't remove it from that other guy who got it. So that sucks. Alright. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Oh. Cool. Balanced. Right. Do we have enough resources to add a second cell to the treatment ward? We do not. Huh. Well. Yeah, we're going to remove the yips from him. And whoever was the other person who got it, they're just going to have to wait until next week. In addition, Charlie could really use some stress relief. And what are you at? 42? You're probably fine. Alright, before we wrap up the episode, let's uh, just have a peek at the boss's loot real quick. Oh my! Well, I really like big chunks of accuracy. So, oh wait, hold on, we got another boss up too. So it weakens incoming and outgoing heals, but gives her 20% damage if she's in the place where I usually want her to be. Ah, uh, this is a tough choice. Alright, well join us next time on Darkest Dungeon when we murder some kind of boss. And I guess we'll figure it out then.